backers ready, and later at the end of the service, we'll take of those um, together. So uh, we are, uh, are here to come into God's presence, to allow him uh, to lead us towards his love. Uh, as we've been uh, teaching our little three-year-old about what this day is, she can't really say Valentine's Day, so we just say this is Love Day. Um, and so we're celebrating Love Day uh, and uh, with the author of love, God himself. So uh, let's, uh, let's um, come into his love together and allow me to pray for us, and then we'll join in worship. Lord God, we come into your presence, and we thank you <laughs> that you are the author of love. God is love. That's what the word says. Uh, we wouldn't know what love is apart from you. This is love, not that we first loved you, but that you first loved us and you gave your life for us. And so we enter into that. No matter what our circumstances are, no matter what our, our families are, what our relationships are, uh, this is a day uh, of love where we can receive that love from you and give that love away. May it be so. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let me invite you to stand if you uh, are able, uh, and even at home, if you'd want to stand or kneel or change your posture, and let's worship God together. Thank you. 
Praise God, we worship you, Lord. Your love awakens us. For some of us, we feel like we're just barely making it through. We're just drifting through. Some of us are feeling kind of numb and disconnected. We are awakened. We are enlivened. We are animated by your love. 
not because of what we've done, but because of what you have done. And uh, Lord, we're searching for love in so many places. It's found in you and you alone. We receive it today. We receive your love today. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. You may have a seat. Praise God. Welcome. It's good to worship the Lord together. Great to see uh, uh, many of you out here um, in person and uh, not quite as beautiful as a day as last week, but still not bad, right? I mean, we're, it's uh, a little bit o- overcast, but still a beautiful day and, uh, and great uh, being together with church family and so uh, grateful to have many of you joining online. And so go ahead and say hello if you haven't already. Give a, a thumbs up or a smiley face or, uh, or uh, praise the Lord or uh, a way uh, online to let us know that you're uh, there, even as we have folks wave into each other and greeting each other uh, this morning as well. Uh, we are in it together and uh, nothing can stop uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Nothing can stop uh, the, the people of God from worshiping God, from praying to him, from connecting to him, no matter what. And uh, we have had to become very creative this past year (laughs) in figuring out how to be able to continue to move forward and work with everything that's going on. And uh, things are changing all the time, uh, as uh, you may have been seeing if you've been paying attention to the news at all specifically. And it has to do with uh, restrictions around uh, churches. That's literally has changed almost every day this past week. And I sent out a church email a few days ago saying, uh, hey, in the county, we can now uh, meet indoors uh, if it's raining, and that uh, decision got overturned during the week. So right now, um, uh, we cannot meet uh, indoors at all, um, but we can continue to meet outdoors. Uh, and as things continue to change, we will work with uh, our the government and our authorities and all that kind of stuff to make sure that we're doing what uh, is uh, is asked of us, um, but also continuing just to move things forward for the gospel. Um, and so grateful that we can have uh, gatherings like this and that we have technology where we can stay, uh, stay connected. We have uh, community groups that are meeting either outdoors or online. So make sure you're staying connected with one another. And uh, I'm just so proud of our church and of you uh, that we continue to, to, to move forward and continue to find ways to, uh, um, to serve God. Uh, I'm uh, excited about what our youth group is doing. Um, so this coming week, uh, starting tomorrow, is a week off of school for San Jose Unified. Um, so it's their vacation week. Um, and uh, a lot of times that's ski week or, or, or trips or stuff like that. There's not too much of that happening. Um, so what uh, Pastor Jared, our youth pastor, uh, is organizing for our youth is a week of service. Um, so every day this week, he's giving opportunities for our teenagers to do a different service project. Um, so one day they're going to be coming up here to the church and doing some work around the church. Um, another day they're going to be um, uh, making gifts uh, and uh, bags for foster children um, that have to move from home to home. And often they have to put all their belongings into a, a garbage bag. So they're making handmade bags for the kids um, so that when they have to move homes, they have something that, to transport their stuff. The, one day they're going to make uh, things for special needs children. Another day they're going to put gifts together for, um, for our local firefighters. And another day they're going to be uh, serving uh, I think one of the seniors in our community Um, so uh, I'm just uh, excited about that I love that they're taking advantage of this week instead of just saying hey this is off we don't have to do zoom school so we'll just do more computer games Uh, instead some of our youth are leaning in and if you have a teenager and you're like how come I didn't know they're doing this Um, it's because they don't check their email Um, so uh, have them check it have them connect in with Jared and would love to get them involved in the service projects that are coming up this week And uh, that just, uh, again, uh, when people say things like, oh, when is when is church opening again? I'm like, the church ain't never stopped. (laughs) Um, uh, We may not be uh, all inside with one big indoor, you know, worship service, but that doesn't mean that the church has ever closed, that the church has ever stopped. We are the people of God um, doing the work of God, connecting with God. And uh, we spur one another on and we need each other. And if you feel like you've kind of been disconnected and you kind of don't know what, what's, what's going on, lean in. We're here. We're trying to find ways to, to um, connect. But it's not just to check on each other and make sure everything's okay and I'm okay and you're okay. We have a job to do as believers of Jesus Christ, um, to stand up for him, to move things forward for him, to share love in a world that desperately and deeply needs it. So we're not just trying to hang on and hold on and keep things together. We're moving forward. Um, because the gospel is always moving forward. So we're going to uh, 
pray now. We're going to be into God's word this morning in the book of Colossians, uh, and then we'll take of communion together. Um, so uh, uh, let me pray for us. Lord God, we thank you that you are the unstoppable God. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. You are always moving things forward, even though our world is ever changing. Who you are is still the same. And, and how you love is still the same. May we receive from you. May we hear from you. And God, if we know that, that in this ever-changing world, we also have changed, and some of that change has not been for the better. We have turned to ourselves. We have turned towards fear. We have turned towards, uh, towards desperation. We have turned towards addictions. We have turned towards negative behavior and thought patterns. And today we say we need you, God. We want to turn back towards you. We can't even do it of our own strength. So, God, use your power and your love to turn us back to you. We repent and we want more of you. Come and have your way in us. Come in and, and speak to us that we may not just uh, listen to what the culture says and what the world says or what we think, but you. Lead us and guide us that we may love in the way you call us to love. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, on this Valentine's Day, on this love day, we turn to the book of love, um, and that's uh, the Bible. It's uh, God's love letter to us. It always doesn't feel like it when you read some of the, the Old Testament and other passages. We're like, what is this? But overall, it's the story of God's love. What we've been talking about is uh, that the book of Colossians um, highlights the gospel. And the way that I simply define uh, the gospel is good news, bad news, great news. Good news, God loves you. You're created for a purpose. Bad news is that we can't find that purpose on our own. And, and we turn away from God, we try to figure it out, and we break that relationship with God. We can't get there on our own. We cannot live that life we are created to live by ourselves. But the great news is that God makes a way when we can't make a way. That Jesus does what we could not do. He gives his life for us. And because of his love, we can experience his love. We can be followers of Jesus. Our eternities change. We can be saved so that our eternity is with Christ. And not only that, but that we can receive that love and give that love away. So we're going to pick it up in the book of Colossians. I'm going to backtrack a little bit from where we left off um, last time and pick it up in verse 12, and we will go from there. Colossians 3, verse 12 says this, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any one of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in, purpose, in perfect unity. And so this is the calling that we have. What we looked at um, last time, uh, is, the, that, uh, is, is who we are, of what God has called us to do, and, and the life that he's called us to live, that we would set our minds on Christ. And there's so many other things that, we, that draw our attention, uh, and yet if we were to let our minds, instead of just have, letting our thoughts have us, if we would have our thoughts, take control of our thoughts, to think of that which is good, that which is right on Christ himself, then it would set the course for the rest of our lives. Uh, and, and it goes through, as we looked at last week, um, the different things that we instead put on our own selfishness, our own greed, our own anger. And the call is to take that off and to put on love, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, and compassion. These are great things. These are great virtues. And yet they are not disembodied themselves. This is a good thing, and, and like today, you know, it's Valentine's Day, it's love day. There's lo there'll be lots of talks about what it means to, to love romantic love or other types of love. And, and even this calling for us to have compassion and kindness and, and, and goodness uh, sounds good, but how do we do that? 
Um, throughout uh, the, this uh, book of Colossians, it's talked about things like not just going back to the uh, elementary or elemental spiritual beliefs. And what that means for us today, I think, is disembodying certain values and traits and holding them up and saying, let's just go after that. And this year, when so much has been pulled out from under us and we're trying to figure things out on our own, so much of that, I think we've turned to what are our values, what are our ideals, and then just hold that up. And depending on what that value or that ideal is, is going to send you into a different direction. And so whether it's justice or, or freedom or, or love or equality, all those things are good. They're good words, right? And they're good things. But if you're just running after that, what, is that, what does that look like and how is that defined? Even love. To say, all right, if all the world needs now is love, true love. If, we, if everybody just loved each other, we would be okay. Well, what does that mean? What does it mean to really love one another? The, the Bible defines love, agape love, as sacrifice. Putting someone above yourself. Laying down your own needs for the good of someone else. That's love. And, and for us, when we look at this and we say, all right, let's be more loving people, how do we even do that? And, and I think our society would just say, well, just do it. Just be loving. Love, 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 love. Just, I'm going to love, 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 love. Okay, great. I, I was teaching our, uh, our children over uh, at our kids club, our, our online Zoom kids club uh, this week and uh, elementary age kids and uh, was talking to them about the fruit of the spirit. So I took the camera outside uh, and I took it over to one of the trees on the church um, property. And so I asked the kids, you know, on Zoom, like, all right, guys, what kind of tree do you think this is? And they're looking at it. And I reach up and there's a fruit in the tree. So I pull this fruit off the tree. And I say, what is this? They're like, it's a lemon. I'm like, great. So what kind of tree is it? And I say, it's an orange tree. No, it's a lemon tree. I said, no, this is an orange tree. And they're saying, no, it's a lemon tree. I said, no, 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 it just happens to have lemons on it. Just because it has lemons on it doesn't make it a lemon tree. I like oranges better. And because I like oranges better, I want it to be an orange tree. And then I, I took an orange and I took some tape and I taped it to the tree. And I said, there you go. Now there's an orange on it. That makes it an orange tree. Like, no, pastor, it's not an orange tree because you want it to be an orange tree. It's not an orange tree because you put an orange on it. It's a lemon tree because that's what comes out of the tree. And that's how love works. Love is one of the fruit of the Spirit. It comes out of us when we have God in us. When, he, when the roots of who we are is rooted in love, then love flows out of us. If you don't have love in you, you can't just say, love, 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 love. It's going to just come out of me. I'm just going to duct tape it to my branches. Love, 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 love. <laughs> Lucas has got it. Someone's got it. All right. We can't just say that. It doesn't just come out. That's what we're trying to be as, as people. And, and I think when we hold up things, it's the same thing with just saying, you know, equality and justice and freedom and all these things. If we can just proclaim it loud enough and we can define it on this other ways and put it externally, then somehow it will get into us. And, and yet God is the God of love and equality and of justice and of freedom and, and all of the great values that we hold up, but they're not disembodied as just one. It, when you read in Galatians when it says what the fruit of the Spirit is. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, and uh, self-control. Did I miss one, Isaac? What did I miss? Goodness. Thank you. Isaac's in Kids Club. He gets, gets, he'll uh, keep me accountable. Thank you, Isaac. Um, all those things. It's not just one. When you say the fruit of the Spirit, it's not just one thing. It's all of those things that come out. And it's not the fruits of the Spirit where it's like all these different. It's one. That's all of those together. And, and that's, that's what flows out. And that's the calling here. And, and we see this in verse 15. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. Are we getting a little sprinkle? Yeah. A little bit. You guys okay? 
We'll be fine. We'll be good. We're good. We're good. <laughs> Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So that's the fullness here. And uh, we're doing good. We're just getting little, little sprinkles here, right? Uh, so online, if you see like a zap, um, that's Lyndon. So uh, he's, standing by all of, he's standing by all of our electronics. So hopefully we're okay here. I think we're good. I think we're good. So here the call is for the peace of Christ to rule in your hearts. That, that it goes back to the larger picture here that we're allowing here, setting our minds on Christ, not setting them on the disembodied values to say, okay, let's just love, let's just justice, just, you know, these things. Instead, God is over all of those. So if we're looking to him, that, then those things then begin to flow out of us as the fruit of the spirit, as the fruit of what God is doing in us. And if we focus on any one of those singular things just by themselves, then we're just trying to duct tape stuff to our branches. Instead here, we go, let the peace of Christ, and that word peace means shalom, wholeness. It means I am okay. It means it is well. Let it be well with you. And as it is, as it is well with you, be thankful. Having that life of gratitude, letting the message of Christ dwell among you richly. And, and so this is how it is for, for, for us, my friends, if there's a desire for us to have more love in our lives in this world or any other of the values that we so dearly seek and desire in our world that we are grieved that is not, there's not more of in our world, it starts with us dwelling in Christ. And it tells us how to do that. Let the message of Christ dwell among you. How does that happen? As you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And so for us to be able to, to have that rootedness, to be trees that are, are rooted in Jesus Christ himself, part of that is this coming together. It's in being with one another. We can't be trees just planted by ourselves. We need the encouragement of one another. We, we need uh, to be able to be in God's word, teaching each other and also singing together. Just being able to gather and hear, even as we're outside with face masks on and, and kind of quietly singing to TV monitors, uh, there's something here. Even as you're at home and you're watching on your your, your phone or on your television or, or your computer and singing out loud. The, the songs, when we sing out, and, and it's not just hearing somebody, it's not just reading, but having your own mouth say the praises of God, sing the truths of God, something changes within us. And, and let me encourage you, if you're feeling dry, if you're feeling like you're kind of withering up, connect in with other people and also connect with God in worship. Just put on some worship music and sing out loud in your room by yourself. Listen to the, the, the words of the music and let them lift you up. There's something about singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs that lift us up, that root us into the love of God and who he is. And this verse 17, whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So that's where our, our focus comes is as we focus in on Christ, it leads us towards love. It leads us. And, and everything that we do, can we do what we do in the name of Jesus? That, that, that's what will, will start to, to connect us down the right path. Is as you go through your daily life, and, and I love the Bible here, it's practical, and it's going to get into some real practical things in a moment. Of in your daily life saying, this is how I'm going to interact with others. This is how I'm going to live, but I'm not just doing it for me. Can I do this in the name of Jesus Christ? Now, in our world, there's a lot of people doing a lot of things in a lot of different names. And there's a lot of people that, that are standing up and doing things 
in the name of Jesus, when I look at and I match their actions and I wonder, I I'm not sure that fits. And I'm like, I would prefer you not um, put the name of Jesus above what you're doing right now. And, and uh, unfortunately, you know, the, the name of Christ and Christianity as, you know, we have a branding problem right now because uh, there's been so much that people are, uh, are grabbing things. And, and so it's, we can get upset and say, don't do that. Stop that. Hey, that's not us. But you know what really changes that is actually if we live out under the banner of Jesus, the true Christian life. And that way, the rest of the world, when they see this, it, it should be in such a way that when some, someone does something ridiculous and hateful and wrong, and they're saying, I'm doing this in the name of Jesus or the name of Christianity or the name of churches, that it should be such a way that the rest of the world would say, no, because we've met Christians and we've met followers of Jesus. And that's not what they stand for. And the problem is the, the uh, people who are taking things in negative ways are getting more press and more, you know, uh, that, that's out there. And, and I believe we're not going to get the press when we love people well. The, the, this week uh, that Jared is having our kids serve our community for the next five days, you will not see that on the news at all. No one will ever hear about it. it, 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 will, it but the only people will know are the people who have been served, the people who have been loved on by our small group of kids in our church. And they will know. And, and, and they will know when they do hear other stuff on the news about Christians doing this and that, they're like, yeah, but these group of, of teenagers at that church, that, that's, that's showing me Jesus in a different way. And then they're gonna have to weigh what's true or not. But we, our call, everything we do, we do it in the name of Christ. And then we have to, to step back and say, am I lifting up the name of Jesus? Am I living it in such a way that honors God or not? Am I living out of that, that rootedness, dwelling in Jesus, letting that come out, and then paying attention to what fruit is coming out? To say, all right, I'm dwelling in Jesus, and so now the fruit of the Spirit is coming out of me. I am living with love and joy and peace and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. Isaac, did I get all nine that time? I think I did. Good. Um, all those things, then, that, then that's coming out. But if what's coming out of me is wickedness and jealousy and, and anger and hatred, and I'm just so annoyed by everything that's going on in the world right now, then what's coming out of me? What's going on? Let everything we do be in the name of Jesus Christ himself. And, and then Paul gets practical. He gets into it in, in these, these next verses um, that says, okay, I'm not just talking about this, you know, out there abstract concept of love, 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 love. I wouldn't sure if I had my echo on that one. Of love, 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 love. It's not just this, uh, this abstract idea. It's living it out in your daily life. And so what Paul is going to do uh, in this next section is he is going to talk about the most common relationships of his time. And, and that's the households um, in the kind of Greek area of the town. And those households, there were household rules in that, uh, that time of relationships. And the three main relationships were between um, husband and wife, between parents and children, and between master and slave. Um, and so Paul is going to speak about, uh, in that context, how all those relationships look. Now, it's a little bit, you know, these verses can be controversial or triggering for some people now as we're looking at this in 2021 but let's look at this to see this is the practical way of how to live things out and we'll, we'll get into this and I know for this when we read for some people reading this where it says master and slave we're like whoa we're talking about slavery here we'll get into that uh, of the context and how that connects now but also as you listen to 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 this uh the more uh kind of current way you can listen to that is kind of as employee and as employer not exactly one-to-one -one, but for us you know uh if you have a boss you, hopefully they're not your master um but there is someone that you're accountable to and that is under authority and uh so you can listen to it in that way so uh, i'm going to read through this whole section and then we will break it down as a practical way of what does that mean to be rooted in christ and have that love flowing out of us in our relationships with one another Verse 18, wives submit, your submit, your husbands to, ugh, wives, submit yourselves to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord. 
Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. Fathers, do not embitter your children, or they will become discouraged. Slaves, obey your earthly masters in everything, and do it not only when their eye is on you and to curry their favor, but with sincerity of heart and reverence for the Lord. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. Anyone who does wrong will be repaid for their wrongs, and there is no favoritism. Masters, provide your slaves with what is right and fair, because you know that you also have a master in heaven. So as I was uh, preparing this, I was kind of looking at it a few weeks ago, I kind of, my, my schedule and what I'd be preaching on, and, I'm, and I realized, I'm like, oh, on Valentine's Day, I'm preaching wives submit to your husbands. Oh, you real funny, Jesus. Oh, Holy Spirit got jokes now. I make me stand up on Valentine's and say wives submit to your husbands. But here, when we, read, when we hear that in 2021, it feels like, whoa, what is this kind of like archaic and like misogynist and like what is going on here? But when we really read and we understand what this is about, that, that's not what, what this is. Uh, when we're saying wives submit to your husbands and also husband love your wives and do not be harsh with them. And setting up the relationship here of caring for one another in a unique way and in a good way. And, and this passage also, when you think about the context um, of who he's speaking to um, at that time, uh, it, men did have dominion over their household and could tell their wives whatever they want and their children whatever they want and their, their slaves whatever they want. And, and here, where we may look at this and say, hey, this is kind of this power structure, but really what it is, is he is speaking to those and, and telling them to care for each other in this real way, to, to, to honor them, not to look down on other people, not, not to um, uh, berate them, but to be a person to care for them. And, and here, it's played out um, within the relationships um, between husband and wife, between parents and children, and between those in authority and those who are serving. And it's not just this concept of, okay, all right, love, 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 let's talk about it on Sunday, and then go live our lives and treat people as we want to treat them and treat people poorly. Saying, no, care for people well in your most important of relationships. Uh, and here, this idea um, throughout Scripture, Paul also calls us to mutually submit to one another. And it, at the, the very heart of it, it's, it's caring for each other. It's this definition of love. I care more for your needs than I care for my own. And in this most intimate of relationships that God has created between husband and wife, he sets it apart to say, for you to deeply care for the needs of one another. And there is also a set apart that there is distinction, that there is difference between men and women. There are difference between children and parents. Um, and so in these particular cases, when in husband and wife, um, it's saying, love each other, but I have made you each uniquely different to love each other. And how that flows out of you, how that fruit comes out of you is different. Now, this is strangely to me, a controversial thing to be able to say now is that there is a difference between men and women. Like it didn't used to be controversial, but now like it feels like it is. And I understand that. But but biblically, and I think as we look at it, there is there is a biological difference between a man and between a woman. Um, and, and here, as God calls us to love each other, it's identifying that there are specific gifts, there are specific things that each person uniquely has and each person is able to offer. Um, and so within that, he says, all right, husbands, lead your wives well, love them well. And, and wives, respect your husband, submit to them and, and respect them in leadership. Um, and so here there is equality. And we talked about this, you know, earlier in the passage, there is, is not Jew or Gentile. There aren't uh, distinctions in equality. Everyone is exactly the same. And yet in role, God gives us different roles. And, and we see this, it just plays out um, in relationships and in people. And as I have done 
pre-marriage counseling and marriage counseling and worked with you know, many couples in different ways, I hear the heart's cry of many people and it matches the book of love of what God is calling. That, that oftentimes when, when there is, is issues going on uh, in marriages between husbands and wives, uh, that, that the, the wife often feels overlooked, taken it for granted, and just wants the husband just to listen. I don't even want you to fix everything. I just want you to, to listen and to, and to be heard. And then oftentimes the husband is frustrated. He's like, I don't know what to do. And the, the deepest thing for a man is not to feel unloved, but to feel disrespected. To feel like I, that, that I'm, I'm trying to love my wife here, but she doesn't respect me. Uh, and, and there's that desire here. And that's what God is calling us to say, husbands, love your wives well. And wives, respect your husbands and, 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 and listen to them and, and, and move forward together. And it's a difficult thing because, again, when I talk to guys, most likely, and if a guy has ended up like in marriage counseling, you know, with me, they're like, you know, I'm doing this for her. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and oftentimes what dudes say when things are broken in relationships is just tell me what to do. I, you're unhappy. What do you want me to do? If you would just tell me what to do, I would do it. And, and most dudes, when they get there, they're like, I am the best husband ever. Like, because, hey, look, I'll let you tell me what to do. But they don't know. Wives don't want that. They don't want to have to tell you what to do. They want you to know what to do and do it. I thought I'd get at least one amen under that. Online, the ladies are like, amen. I shouldn't have to tell you what to do. You should know what to do and do it. Why? Because men, they want you to lead. They want you to know. They want you to care, to listen, to know who to love them well and lead. But then the, the hard part, ladies, <laughs> is to let them lead. Because then it's frustrating because then it's like, all right, fine. Well, then let's do this. Well, no, don't do that. Well, okay, well, then we'll go this way. No, 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 well, uh, hang on, wait, 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 let me slow you down. And it's like, well, every time I try to take over, you're, you're like, tell me, I, well, that's, I want you to do it, but I just want you to do it right. So it's difficult. It's this back and forth. And, and when, when, when a wife disrespects her husband, doesn't listen to them, then he doesn't want to lead. And when he doesn't lead, then she doesn't respect him. And it's this cycle. And, and so here it's saying, here, support each other, submit to one another, care for each other well, be rooted in Christ. And even as it says this, as is fitting in the Lord. And what we're going to see is all of these in these relationships. It's not just what we're doing for each other. We're focusing on each other. Instead, can we step back and say, how can I love you as Christ loves me? What is, how can I love you in the name of Jesus, not in the name of me getting what I want in the relationship? We, we see this also it says, children, uh, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. And all the parents said, Amen. <laughs> children, obey your parents. But it also says that with all of these, it's back and forth. And so we want to focus on the things like, oh, wait, hey, you're supposed to do this and you do this. Everybody has a role here. But fathers and parents, do not embitter your children or they will become discouraged. And, and you know, as adults, man, we and parents, we get frustrated when our kids don't do what they want and kids are going to do what they're going to do my our little one is on zoom preschool every day in the mornings for three hours uh, uh with a bunch of other three four and five year old special needs kids and they're all on little screens uh which is just not fun um but my wife was telling me about something that happened this this week uh that they were, were on and then one of the um the little girls, they saw the screen and suddenly like Tanya's screen just like picked up and started moving and they see like the refrigerator door open and you see all the contents of the refrigerator and then it's dark. And they realized, uh, the teachers did, that little Tanya had picked up her iPad, opened up the fridge and put it in the fridge and closed it. And the teachers are yelling, Tanya, uh, open the refrigerator, open, take us out of the fridge. It's just like eventually it gets, you know, gets out. And I can just imagine, you know, later the parents, you know, come in and one of them got the kid in timeout. What happened? Tanya put the teacher in the refrigerator again. 
It's hard. It's hard raising kids. They're going to do what they want to do. And yet, as parents, the call, when we are rooted in Jesus Christ, when we're loving as Christ, then instead of just being angry, why are you doing this? And why are you embarrassing me? And why are you doing this? How do you love in a way to say, put in Christ first, in the name of Jesus? I'm not, I, because parents can, as Scripture tells us, embitter their children. That if you're always pounding on them, always saying, well, stop doing this and don't doing this and get off the computer and do this and do this and do that. At the end of it, they're not going to remember all those things. They're just going to remember that their mom and their dad just beat them down. And that's what stays and that's what remains. But if we're loving in Christ and we're lifting them up and, and these are just practical things. Children, obey your parents because as you're doing this, you are pleasing God. You're not doing it for yourself. You're doing it for the Lord. And parents, loving your children well, not because you want them to, to be the, the reflections of you that you desire, but instead to lift them up and to care for them. And then it talks about slaves and masters. Uh, and, and here in this time, again, it's difficult for us to say, well, why is, are they even you know, saying Slaves, why not just stop all slavery? Well, because if Paul had said, my message here is now end all slavery, no one would hear anything else that Paul said at that time because at that moment, he couldn't have been able to speak in that way. So instead, he's saying, Whatever, wherever you are right now, you're serving God. And, and so there are a lot of things in our society that we want to change and we can stand up for that change and make that, but also know that right now, whatever situation you are in, you do it as to the Lord. That, that's what um, he says there in those verses. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. And you may be frustrated in your job or in your workplace or in your organization or even in your home and saying, I'm doing all these things and I'm just worn out because of it and I'm just done with it. But if you can rethink how you're viewing it, to say what you're doing, you're not working for Apple or for Intel or for the school district or whatever you're working for, you're working for the Lord, as to the Lord. And, and, and as we look at that, this is what begins to shift in us and begins to change in us. Because all those relationships where it says uh, for us in, in marriages, in families, in our workplace, instead of us focusing, how can we get what I want out of the situation? Or how can I take this disembodied value and just place it on here? Instead, I'm here in this moment and God is here and I'm going to serve the Lord. I'm going to do this in this relationship. I have my wife or my husband or my children or my boss or my employees standing right before me. And I'm rooted in Jesus Christ. I dwell in him. I have his songs in my heart. And so what is going to flow out of me in this time is the fruit of the Spirit is love towards them as to the Lord. And this is the call for those that are serving and for those who are in power. For, for the, those, whoever we are, it is Christ, the Lord Christ, you are serving. Anyone who does wrong will be repaid for their wrongs, and there is no favoritism. It's letting you know that God's got this. He will bring his justice. And we, we care and we do what we can to care for one another. And if you are in a place of power, if you are in a place of authority, then you care for those people under you. You will be called into account. All those in power, all those who have authority, if any, will be called into account. And so it's for us to say, let me, wherever I am, if I have power and authority or I don't, wherever I am, to, to serve God and know that we are under his authority. And then what flows out of us is his love. It only happens when we come towards him, when we can be able to say, all right, I'm rooted in you, Jesus. And now out from me will flow that which you desire. So what's coming out of you these days? What's the fruit that's coming out in the, your real relationships? In your relationships at, in your home with your spouse, your relationship with your children or your parents, your relationships uh, at, at work. And, and that's why the, it's, it's brought out. That's why Paul brings that out. And, and to, to bring it real. And I, I know this kind of 
goes against us. We're like, this was fine, Paul, when it was like theory, <laughs> when you were just like theoretical. But now in my actual life, it says, yes, that's where you know where you are. And so we allow the fruit to show us, to give us a sign of, of the health of where we are as a tree. But then if we don't like the fruit, we can't just duct tape new fruit to our branches. Instead, we go back to the roots and say, all right, if, if, if my fruit is not what I desire it to be, and if the fruit I see in this world is not what I desire it to be, then, then I first start with myself being rooted back in Jesus Christ. We build our lives on him. And that's who we are. And, and I want to encourage you, this, uh, this week is the beginning of Lent. Um, so uh, Wednesday, the 17th, is Ash Wednesday. And as Protestants, we often don't do very much with that. But, but this year, I'm really encouraging you to lean in, um, to, to lean into this uh, season, to set aside this time, because I think we need an intentional time of rooting ourselves in Christ. Um, and so I want to encourage you, maybe this is a time to, to fast from something, giving something up, or a time to start a new practice to really root in. Uh, for those of you as a part of our uh, church uh, family, hopefully you received uh, a bag like this on your doorstep, um, or if you were here last week, you picked one up yourself. If you didn't, go ahead and, uh, and get one if you're here today, um, or let us know, and we'll make sure that one shows up uh, on your doorstep uh, soon. And what it is, it's just a, a daily devotional um, that Nick Palermo, one of our elders, wrote. Um, it's 40 days. You'll notice there's actually 46 days in Lent, but we don't count Sundays. Um, so 40 days you do this devotional. On Sundays, you come to church or, or, or join in online. Uh, and then there's also a, a journal in here for you to start um, writing out your own thoughts and prayers and, and uh, just setting aside this time to connect into the Lord. So if you didn't get one of these and you're online, we mailed out a bunch uh, of them this week uh, to Washington, D.C., and to uh, um, a whole bunch of different places, Stockton, and wherever you are, uh, let us know, and uh, we'll send you one of these if you'd like one as well. We enter in because we desire to produce the fruit God's called us to produce, and it only happens when we dwell in Him. So we're going to sing a song um, now of worship, and then we're going to take a communion. If you would like to have communion, go ahead and prepare the elements in your home. Uh, for those of you here uh, in person, hopefully you received one of our little mini communion cups uh, when you came in. If you didn't and you would like one, uh, go ahead and raise your hand, uh, and, and someone will bring one to you. Let me pray for us, and let's sing. Lord God, we build our lives on you. May we be your people. May we submit to you and yield to you and know that you are in charge. Lord God, we give you our relationships between husbands and wives, between children and parents, between friends, between uh, co-workers. Lord, that, that what flows out of us, that, that shows really what's inside of us. And we cannot do it apart from you. We repent, God, to recognize that, that some of what we have done has not been of you. We have not put you first, but now may you change us. Instead of focusing on the external, we focus on you, that you may change us from the inside and that your love may flow outside. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We're going to sing this song together and then we'll take of communion.
Amen. We build our lives on him. It is a firm foundation. We can't just love, love, love. We want to. We can't. We mess it up. We can't figure it out on our own. We get lost and confused and angry and embittered. But he is love. And he comes to us. And he dwells in us. And we are changed. We're going to take of communion together now. This was the meal that Christ took with his disciples. The Passover meal that he gave new meaning. And uh, if you have one of these little cups, they're a little bit tricky. There's two layers. You peel off the little clear layer and uh, you'll get the wafer out. And uh, for you at home, if you have a bread or a cracker or tortilla or something um, and you have household with you, would you go ahead and take that now and break that and prepare that? This represents to us the body of Jesus Christ. He gave his life for us, gave his body for us. He didn't just talk about it. It was real. He gave his life in a very real way. And so let me pray for us and then let's take of this. Lord Jesus, as you've given your life toward to us, may we receive it anew today and may it be rooted deep down within us that you may dwell within us and that we may flow your love out of us. We receive your sacrifice for us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. This is the body of Jesus Christ broken for the forgiveness of your sins. Take and eat in remembrance of him. And after the meal, Christ took the cup. If you would peel back that second layer for those of you here or those at home, prepare that wine or that juice or that water. If you have other people with you in the room, go ahead and pour it for one another and offer it to each other. It's represented the blood and the life of Jesus. And so it's not just a sacrifice that he did once for us, but it's his life that lives in us and flows out of us as we dwell in him and as the fruit of the Spirit flows out of us in our lives. This is the blood of Jesus Christ poured out for the forgiveness of your sins. Take and drink in remembrance of him. Amen. On this day, on this love day, may you know the love of Jesus Christ. And may it flow in you and may you move forward to say, in all that I do, whether in work or in deed, may I do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And all that I'm doing for others, it's not really for others. It's as unto the Lord. I'm doing this for the Lord. And as, as, as I do it for the Lord, I will do it for one another. Receive this blessing as we close our service today. This benediction, this good word over you. In the name of the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, may you receive the love of Jesus Christ. May the peace of Christ dwell in your hearts that you may be filled with thanksgiving. May you be rooted in Christ himself so that out of you may flow the love of God. May you love as you have been loved. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. God bless you and go in peace.